Hi everyone, Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service, here to talk about the potential for an extreme and extended prolonged heat wave. Uh, what's that mean? Temperatures much above normal for the next week or so here in Southern California, with potential high impact to our region. Okay, some of the key points, extended heat wave for at least a week, if not longer, or returning in the end of July, now, near record high temperatures, certainly this upcoming weekend, we are talking temperatures eight to as much as 20 degrees above averages or normals. So most places around 10 degrees above normal. That results in high heat risk, and that is a heat health impact concern. The only exception is the immediate coast. High heat risk and warning level, and this means all populations can be impacted. And for those not prepared, uh, that also means outdoor activities. Possible all-time highs in our mountains and deserts. And this heat wave, while it gradually decreases next week, it could persist um, and hold on for inland areas. Some of the temperatures we're looking at, depending on your region, the main deserts, the lower deserts, Coachella Valley, Borrego, 110 to 124 for about a week. Uh, the peak looks like this weekend, early next week. Now for places like the mountains, little relief, 80s and 90s, and some of our lower elevations around three, 4,000 feet over 100. Again, the peak this weekend. Dangerous heat in the Inland Empire for about seven days. Uh, peak temperatures getting around and just over 110, like places in Lake Elsinore and Hemet. Now for the Inland Valley areas, um, some relief, but still temperatures well in the 90s, and we'll see some temperatures going over 100, over the century mark for inland San Diego, Orange Valley uh, areas. So that is also expected peak Friday through Sunday. Now we will, as mentioned, some relief on the coast and especially on the beach, but still hot and still above normal temperatures for this time of year. Now the excessive heat warning covers a large area, not just Southern California, desert Southwest, all the way up to Vegas, all the way up into the Sacramento Valley as shown here. Really large coverage um, it's unusual to see this massive an area. We have seen it in some recent heat waves, though, in the past five years. Departure from normal. This is an important one because temperatures aren't just going to be hot because it's July or summer. Um, these are going to be much above average. Like I said, averaging 10 to 12 degrees above average for most areas. And you've got to go all the way to the immediate coast to get near normal, the beach. What kind of numbers are we looking at? Uh, we'll be in the 120 range for the Coachella Valley, Ocotillo Wells. We'll be in the 110, Victorville, even in the Inland Empire between 105 and 110, some of the hotter spots getting above that. Now the tricky area will be the immediate coast. Now certainly the beaches won't get above 80, but inland between I-5 um, and the 405 and I-15, we're gonna have a big range in temperatures. So your inland valleys, should be prepared, especially uh, on the weekend, for these extreme temperatures in the 90s to around 100. The fire weather is a concern too because the fuel, the grass, the weeds, the vegetation has dried out rapidly with the recent warm weather in July, and it'll continue to do so. So now we have below average conditions for that fuel moisture, which makes it a little more susceptible if there's ignition. Please be careful um, this upcoming weekend and during the duration of the heat wave. Now, uh, for the outlook coming up, uh, we don't expect much relief. There's a little hint of monsoon going into Arizona, but overall temperatures remaining above average as we go further into July in Southern California. The heat wave or the dome of hot air uh, is building over us now. It's gonna be centered uh, right over central Southern California on Thursday, then it just expands and, and, and becomes massive, centered from Southern California to Arizona over the weekend. It weakens a little bit and shifts to the east a little bit by next week. That's why we talk about slight cooling on the coast and coastal areas, a little deeper marine layer. Inland, it hangs on, um, even though we will see a little bit of a drop in temperatures, even in the deserts. Now, um, it may build back. Uh, projections are that for the last week of July, 
it builds back into the Las Vegas, southern Utah area as shown here. Maybe some monsoon moisture making up on the backside. So the fire weather risk is significant. Now for the areas where fires could get out of control and be harder to contain, that's the yellow and orange shaded here. Um, that's due to daily winds and sea breeze. Now for the heat risk, that's almost all areas. It's going to be building into the weekend with that dome of hot air building on top of us. So we're looking at the orange and red becoming dominant and widespread even on Friday. By Saturday, Sunday, we're in the red for a lot of areas from the inland valleys through the Inland Empire, across parts of the mountains, and certainly the deserts, which end up going into the purple level, which is two or more consecutive days of red. So this means all populations at risk for excessive heat if you don't take precautions or have the ability to cool down. Okay, some of the key points, extended heat wave for at least a week, if not longer, or returning in the end of July. Now, near record high temperatures, certainly this upcoming weekend, we are talking temperatures eight to as much as 20 degrees above averages or normals. So most places around 10 degrees above normal. That results in high heat risk, and that is a heat health impact concern. The only exception is the immediate coast. High heat risk and warning level, and this means all populations can be impacted. And for those not prepared, uh, that also means outdoor activities. Possible all-time highs in our mountains and deserts. And this heat wave, while it gradually decreases next week, it could persist um, and hold on for inland areas.